Hey guys, I'm Remax, a Masters of Felios main, and today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about a Felios. Yo, what's up guys? So here's what we're going to go over today. We're going to be going over a Felios's kit, his gun order, his gun pairings, his last hit guns and swap combos, animation cancels, flash combos, ultimate usage, runes and items, laning phase, and mid to late game team fighting. If you didn't understand any of that, I'll explain all of it in the video, so let's get right into it. So, Ophelius' kit is pretty unique, I would say. He gets five different guns that start in the same order every game with Calibrum, Severum, Gravitum, Infernum, and Crescendum in that order at the start every game. He also doesn't level up skills. Instead, he levels up his stats with attack damage, attack speed, and lethality. And you're going to want to max attack damage first, attack speed second, and lethality last. Ophelius' guns each have 50 ammo. And when you use up the ammo on one gun, it'll automatically swap you to the next gun. Each of Ophelius' abilities take up 10 ammo, and keep in mind that the swap animation once you use up a gun is 1 second and you can't avoid it. Each of these guns also provide Ophelius with a different auto attack, ability, and ultimate ability. Alright, let's talk Ophelios guns. So, Calibrum is the long range gun. It gives you 100 extra range on your auto attacks. And your Q is long range. It'll mark a target for an empowered auto attack with your offhand weapon. The ultimate does the same thing, where it'll apply stacks on both. And you can choose where you want to hit for the same exact concept. Severum is the healing gun. So, if you auto attack, it heals you on autos. The Q gives you movement speed increase and marks targets with the offhand weapon. And you can go for a long range auto attack here because Calibrum's the secondary gun. It also overheals you for a shield if you're at max HP. You notice that little shield bar I have? It can overheal you. I just want to show you the Sever Molt as well. So when you have damage taken, Sever Molt will provide flat healing for you. Uh, so you can use it if like you're in danger or something. Alright, let's talk Grav and Infernum. So Grav applies a slow on every auto attack. And it'll also mark a target. But then that lets you detonate your Q. That's going to snare them for one second. Grav's ult does the same thing, but it also applies a 99% slow on the ultimate itself. So what that does is it slows targets, and then you can snare them after. So when you grab ult someone, you want to wait a little bit before detonating them so you can keep them CC'd for the longest duration. Infernum is the AoE gun. It does extra damage to the first target hit, and then targets afterwards will also take damage. Its Q is an AoE wave that also applies its offhand gun. And then you can swap and detonate that as well. <clears throat> Lastly, the ult. Infernum ult is an AoE ult that applies more damage on stacked targets because it explodes on each target it hits. Last but not least, we have Crescendum, the boomerang gun that attacks faster the closer you are. So it's a pretty good gun when you're fighting melee range because you'll start attacking really fast. The sentry applies your offhand gun. So in this case, I have grab which means that I can grab from far away because it pretty much acts as a clone copy of yourself wherever the sentry is. Then we have Crescendum Ultimate, which gives you four chakrams on one target hit and then an extra additional chakram depending on how many other people you hit. So this gun's really nice to use going melee and DPSing people. Keep in mind though that Aphelios' extra chakrams can get deleted by wind walls, so it's important to understand that when you're playing those matchups. So you might be wondering why I've talked about guns individually and haven't really explained how to use each one in every scenario. And that's because Aphelios flows the best when you think about gun orders and gun combinations. And that's how you get most of the damage out of this champion. Okay, so let's talk about it. Obviously setting up the guns correctly is part of what makes Aphelios so hard to play. How do you show up to all the fights with the correct guns? And so the solution that a lot of Aphelios players created was to create this traditional style of either getting your guns in the order of red, white, green, purple, and blue, or green, white, red, blue, and purple. What this does is it creates guaranteed pairings of red and white, green and white, red and blue, purple and blue, and green and purple. This gives us like really nice combos very easily if we continue to use that order. But Remy, how do we set up the order, you ask? So to set up the order, what's going to decide our order is depending on what gun we get rid of first. So in this example that I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to get rid of Severum first, and then I'll show you the exact order you get rid of the guns to make sure you can set up one of the traditional orders. So we got rid of Severum, now we want to get rid of Calibrum, right? So I'm going to get rid of Calibrum here. Uh, all right going get rid of grab 
up here. Alright, now I get rid of Infernum. And so this is uh, the most important part that you have to pay attention to. Right after you get rid of Infernum, now you're left back at the one of the original orders, which is white, and then it would either be red or green here. And when you're at the situation, you want to make sure you get rid of the red or green first, so you can have white go in between red or green. And so you'll notice that if we do this, we're going to be on the correct order. And now we would get rid of white and then green. And if you look here, um, you can notice that it's in the order that you want it, where it's Crescendum, Calvum, Gravitum, Infernum, then Severum. So you might be wondering, okay, um, well, what happens if we get off of the traditional order? How do we get back onto the traditional order? And so I have it in the correct order right now, but let's say, for example, uh, I actually mess this up, right? And now I'm thinking, oh shoot, um, what do I do? What do I do? I have white and purple, probably one of the combos that I don't want. So if I have one of these combos that I don't want, all I have to keep in mind is basically I always want white to be in between red and green, right? So I just got rid of red and green, which in my head, I know that if I get rid of white here, then I can work towards just keeping the order of what I want. And then if I go through this order, eventually I'm going to come back upon the um, original order, right? So I'm going to do this here and now I'm going to have red and green again. And so I need to know that when white comes up, I'm just going to want to put it between one of them and I can change up my order however I want. So the rule of thumb is, is that so long as white is next to um, red or green, then you'll always be able to fix your orders. All right, so now I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, every single one of the pairings that we get in the traditional order, because knowing how to use these pairings is where you're going to get a lot of your damage run. So to start off, we're going to talk about red and white. So red and white is probably your highest DPS early game gun, and it's super good for dueling. And the reason behind that is because we can use red Q to get a lot of uh, chakrams, which is going to give us really high DPS. So for example, basically you'd want to go red into mana range white, and that'd just be like, you walk up to someone and start fighting them. And if you're all in it, you might want to red, ult of the white, and then uh, melee range fight them, right? So it's a really, really high DPS gun where you can kite around with it, swap, go melee, and then start dueling people. So green white is a really, really interesting pair. Um, it's extremely fast at taking objectives, zoning, it pretty much does it all. So let me explain, okay? So first and foremost, it has extremely high DPS. If you put a tower near an enemy champion and you start auto attacking them, you can DPS them extremely well. This also works on objectives. So let's say you're taking drag, you'd put a tower down and then you'd start autoing and you still get very high DPS. You can also use this pairing to zone people from entering so for example let's say someone's entering drag and they walk into here but you're standing over here it doesn't matter you can still auto them from really far away so extremely threatening to people who are entering green white also has the best one shot potential for felios by using your calibrum q combo with a ult right after so watch this so if you calibrum q and then ulti right after you can auto twice okay and so that's one of your highest single target damage combos. The only problem with it during laning phase is that sometimes it gets blocked by minions and you're unable to get your first Q off, which is a little bit unfortunate. So this combination is extremely flexible. I usually really like it and uh, it's great at zoning, DPSing, and taking objectives. It's a pretty strong combo. So purple and green is pretty interesting because a lot of people don't really like this combination. It's They say it's pretty sleeper, which I get where they're coming from in terms of pure damage. It's probably on the lower end, but what it does provide with you is a lot of consistency and utility. So for starters, what first comes to mind for people is just a green Q swap into instant grab. That's really, really long range crowd control, right? Another example is you can start with purple and then swap the green Q and get a guaranteed green Q. Another form of guaranteed damage that we have is green Q into grab into green ulti. And so while that doesn't do as much as green and white, 
it's a really, really good way to get guaranteed damage and just chunk people for a combo. So while this combo doesn't do insane amounts of damage, it's generally pretty good at setting things up as well as getting consistent damage. Our next combo, one that's pretty popular, is purple and blue. So purple and blue is pretty popular for a lot of reasons. People seem to consider it to be the uh, the team fighting combo, which I understand why. Um, also has really nice trading patterns in lane. So during laning phase, for example, if you're trading, you can like to go auto attack Q into swap Q. And so this is an extremely fast trade that has good range and good damage. Another thing that you can do with this combo is uh, set yourself up to do a lot of damage. So I'm going to run out of the graph here, or purple here, because um, I'm currently out of ticks. But for example, what we could do is let's say we wanted to purple Q and we were still on blue. We could do this and it would be guaranteed because they would be snared and they'd be unable to move. So that's another way to get guaranteed good damage. Purple and blue, generally speaking, early game are considered more utility setup guns, but as the game goes later on, they become more and more teamfight oriented. And last but not least, actually maybe least, we have the green, uh, the blue-red combo. And blue-red, honestly, is not the best pairing, but it has its purposes. So the first purpose, or <laughs> the main thing you'd be using this for is um, this combination I'm gonna show you right here. So for example, Let's say that we are fighting, and let me get to a wave, okay? Actually, let me get low real quick so I can show you. So we, we just came off a team fight, and we're low, and we need to heal up. We use it on a wave. Oh, I, I auto-refresh HP here. Let me, let me try again. <laughs> so we would auto-refresh HP, and this is pretty much the main way you're gonna be wanting using this combo, is to just show up. And it's going to heal you for a chunk. So it's a really good way to instantly get HP back if you're in the middle of a fight. And that should be all the traditional gun order combos. And for those of you guys that are curious about combos that we might not usually see and how we could use them, red green is not bad for chasing people down as well as finishing them. You can run them down with this and then you'd swap and you look for a Q finish, like green Q. It's not bad for just chasing people down but they don't really help each other do damage so i wouldn't recommend this combo past the early game because if you show up to a fight with this combo you're not going to do too much damage blue white is best used during laning phase because the opportunities to have good combos with it post laning phase is a bit hard but its best use is blue q on multiple targets and then into melee range uh white because it helps you get a lot of chakras so blue green isn't terrible because they both do okay damage in their own right but the best usage for this combo is actually wave clearing if you use blue q on a wave and then auto down it's early game so obviously i still did a lot of damage to these but generally speaking um because you're able to get a lot of marks which is going to make um calibrum do more damage you're able to end up getting like pretty decent wave clear so it's good for clearing waves fast if you ever find yourself in that situation. And then last and most definitely least is purple white. And if you find yourself stuck on this combo, the two ways you can use it is you could walk up purple and then melee range auto. Not too much damage, but it's got decent 1v1 potential. Or the other thing you could do is, let's say you're running away, but you don't have time to fight back. You would put a tower down and as you're running away, um, you could swap and grab so it's useful for running away but you really would not want to enter a team fight with these guns if you can avoid it so some of you might already know what swap combos and last tick combos are but essentially a swap combo slash last tick combo is when you use the last bit of ammo that aphelios has and then use it to swap into another combination that works really well with it and so, for example, when you go from blue, white, red, which is uh, a combination that you can get after your first rotation going into your second rotation in the traditional order. So it's a really nice way to set up chakram. So let me show you, okay? So you use last take of blue on the wave, for example, and then you red Q, and you find yourself with nine chakrams, just like that. And so the advantage to using swap combos and last tick combos is that you're able to 
use multiple abilities at once. So a lot of champions might be limited to maybe their Q when they're fighting. But if Aphelios fights at the right moment, he can potentially get four abilities off in a single fight. So what are some of his best swap combos? First one I'm going to show you is red-white into green-white, where you use the last stick of red. And then you swap to green-white, and you're able to get a lot of chakrams before you go to green-white. So you can do a lot of damage right from the get-go. The next one I'm going to show you is last tick white into green-purple, where you put a tower down. And you can back off and set yourself up for instant grab into caliber Q. This combo is really nice if you're going to set up CC right away and start a fight, or if you're following up on someone and you want to continue the chain CC. So green purple into blue purple is a combo that comes alive once you get to the mid to late game and you're actually able to swap comfortably with uh, Inferno Multi. And what I mean by that is you're going to start with a green Q which then is going to get you an AoE Snare, which is going to transition into a really nice Inferno ulti or blue ulti. So this combo isn't as strong early game, but it definitely comes online mid to late game when you can set yourself up for some pretty good ultis. Blue purple into red purple is a combo that's pretty nice for catching people off guard and chasing them down. And the reason why is because blue Q actually has a longer range than your auto range. So what you can do is you can catch people off guard with the blue Q into a purple swap and then chase them down with the red Q. So it has a surprising amount of range and chase potential, a little bit lower on the damage side, but assuming you're going to win the fight, it's a pretty good way to start a fight. So similar to the combo before, but this one has a bit more 1v1 potential because you're going to be swapping to red white. You lead with purple Q and then you swap to red white and then take over by gap closing and out damaging them. And I'm going to repeat this combo from earlier, which is blue white into red white. And this is a really good combo during lane, especially when you're getting slow shoved into. She just blue the wave, then red white, and then fight them with melee and chakrams with a lot of chakrams. And then uh, similar to one of the ones I showed you earlier, where you start with like blue purple, it's um, blue purple into red white. So you get both blue and purple on their last ticks and you can surprise them with an engage again. But this time you swap and then you take over melee range. This is a really nice combo that you can get off pretty often in laning phase because not only does it follow the traditional order, but you're able to catch people off guard with the range on Infernum Q into Grav Q. One of my favorite combos to use. Okay, so animation canceling on Aphelios. The first animation cancel that we're going to talk about is the animation cancel for his W. The W animation can be canceled by his auto attacks, his abilities, and his ultimate. Let me show you. So first I'm going to cancel with his auto attacks. And so if you press W right before your auto attack goes off, you're able to swap. And it's a lot easier to do the more attacks you get. So you might mess it up a bit in the early game if you're not really good at your timing. The next one is swapping with abilities. And so while you can't do it with Grav because Grav has no start animation, you can swap with Severum, for example. So you're going to notice that when I swap to Severum, there's going to be no animation because I buffered the Q during it, so I don't need to show the animation. And then the last one, which is animation cancelling with your ultimate, this one's really nice if you're fighting in the heat of the moment or you're trying to catch people off guard. So for example, let's say I'm laning and if I was permanently hovering grab, people would respect that and back off, right? But let's say I'm on Savrum, it's a lot easier to catch people off guard and then just swap to a gravel. And it, it's the same exact amount of time to cast it, but they just won't expect the grab because I'm not currently on the gun. Okay, so while we're on the topic of swapping and animation canceling, as I mentioned earlier, when Aphelios is reloading, there's nothing that can cancel that one second animation that we get when we're switching guns, except we can use our ultimate during this cooldown period. So I'm going to use my grab and then I'm going to get a crescendo multi right after, okay? So watch. 
And so you notice how we never had that swapping animation because we replaced the swapping animation with the ulti animation. And this is really, really nice especially when you get good at controlling the order of your guns because it enables you to consistently DPS during fights as well as get really, really clean swap combos because you're doing damage throughout the whole fight and you don't have a one second period where you're stuck doing nothing. Now I'm gonna speed run a little bit and tell you uh, what animations we can cancel on each of our guns. So for Severum, we can flash at the start of the Q animation and then we can also flash during the Q animation. On Calabrum, Calabrum is pretty cool. You can Q flash to buffer the animation while you're flashing, or you can Q during the animation to avoid targets. So for example, if I wanted to hit the target behind, okay, I messed that up. If I wanted to hit the target behind, I could Q flash and I could change the angle in which the uh, Calabrum Q goes. For Crescendum, we can Q and then flash out of the animation to leave a tower behind, or we can flash and Q. But if we do it too fast, it's just gonna stay behind. So not too many applications for this animation cancel, but it still exists. For Infernum, Infernum, you cannot flash Q. It'll stay in the spot initially it was, okay? So keep that in mind because I've messed that up a few times before. But what we can do instead is we can Infernum Q and we can flash out during the second part of the animation so we can get away really fast. And so the nicest application of that is, for example, let's say we're kiting or we're trying to run away and it, the enemy is too close to us. All we can do is we can Q and then we can flash and grab. And so what that does is it lets us create a lot of space with only the starting part of the animation for Infernum. And then also two things I forgot to mention is that on purple, you can cast the animation of your Q while it's flying. So if you want an instant root, you can auto and then while it's flying, uh, detonate it. So it instantly snares. And then as for uh, green Q, you can actually cancel the animation of how fast the auto attack goes by autoing some, something else and then hitting the arc target for a faster auto attack. So you're going to notice the speed difference here. It's much faster. So if you're looking for a quick trade in lane, make sure you auto something else first before detonating your Q so you don't get caught in the animation too long. As for Aphelios' ultimate in flashing, you can flash out of the animation, but you can't buffer it with your flash. It won't move with you. It only goes from the point in which you clicked it. So keep that in mind. You can't catch people off guard with like a ulti flash because that won't help it move forward. If you wanna go for a long range ult, you have to flash first and then ulti. Runes and items. So runes and items, Aphelios actually has um, three viable runes or keystones and three viable mythics, which means that he has a lot of flexibility when it comes to deciding uh, which runes and items you wanna take depending on the game. And so I'm going to show you guys example rune pages and speak to you as to why I think certain runes are good in certain situations. So in most situations, I recommend going Conquer because it gives you a lot of opportunities to pop off on this champion, especially when you're against a lot of melee champions. So if you're an engaged support slash bruisers during the landing phase, I really recommend taking Conquer. Getting that stacked up and then going into fight feels extremely good on this champion, and you don't get that feeling with any other rune. However, I also think that press the attack is actually a pretty strong option for Aphelios because it gives them a lot of potential to burst people as well as take good short trades in lane. It procs on your Severum and a lot of Aphelios' trading patterns actually end up with him getting three autos off. So you can't really go wrong with PTA if your opponents are a little bit more mobile, a little bit more ranged, and you don't think you're going to get your Conqueror stacks up as fast. And then last, we have the Lethal Tempo page, which I think gives Aphelios the best scaling, but I think it's the least consistent rune on him. I would recommend taking Lethal Tempo if you have an Enchanter support and you plan on just playing an extremely front-to-back teamfight because that's when the scaling with Lethal Tempo is going to be really nice. As for the secondary tree and you're deciding what you want to go, my two recommendations are either Sorcery's Nimbus Cloak and Gathering Storm. And this is nice when you're looking for a bit more outplay and a bit more scaling. But if you think you're going to be fighting a lot, it's okay to take the Domination Tree and go Ravenous and Taste of Blood to outheal against all the opponents you fight. 
So in terms of itemization, Aphelios is actually pretty flexible with what items he wants to go. There's no clear cut best answer and it generally changes depending on the game. So what I can say is that for Aphelios, going Kraken Slayer is generally good when you're going against really tanky team compositions that have more, like two or more tanks. Kraken Slayer is gonna make a really big difference in the amount of DPS you do to those champions. So in terms of raw DPS, Kraken Slayer is usually the answer. The only times you wouldn't want to go Kraken Slayer is when you think that there's a pretty high chance you're gonna get one shot, the enemy team comp is super ranged, or you're looking for a different type of survivability, then you wouldn't go Kraken Slayer. But Kraken Slayer against tanky team comps is always really good. The next option I like going is actually Immortal Shield Bow. I think Immortal Shield Bow synergizes with Aphelios super well, and this is because it helps him survive burst. And as a champion that lacks mobility and is actually generally pretty squishy, having Immortal Shield Bow kick in to survive burst is really nice. And in particular, I've been enjoying it with the Kaisa matchup. What it allows me to do is I survive the burst, and then once I survive the burst, I just take over fights completely because Aphelios is so good at dishing out sustained damage. And then the last option that I'll go once in a while is Gale Force. And Gale Force is interesting on Aphelios because it gives him a bit more creativity and mobility. And what I mean by this is it lets you play fights differently because you could go for like a Gale Force grab, you could bait people in with Gale Force, and it also means that you don't have to burn flash for certain situations where almost otherwise you would have to. For example, if a bard's ulting you and you have to avoid his ulti, you don't have to worry about flashing it. You have Gale Force, meaning you can play more aggressive more often. So to sum up the mythics, Kraken Slayer for tanky team comps in general, pretty good. Immortal Shield Bow to survive burst when you're against a lot of assassins. Immortal Shield Bow, good option. And then lastly, Gale Force is good versus ranged comps or avoiding key cooldowns. As for the rest of his itemization, you will almost always go Runon's Hurricane second. There are very, very few games where I wouldn't go Runon's Hurricane second. So generally, Aphelios' build path is really clear once you get your mythic correct. You're going to like to go Runon's Hurricane, Synergize so Super Alta's Kit, into Infinity Edge. And it's really, really important that you build Infinity Edge on Aphelios' Kit because Aphelios scales super well with crit because he has a lot of crit modifiers. So what this means is that hitting that threshold where Infinity Edge is going to start amplifying your damage is really, really important to make Aphelios work as a champion. Then once you start getting into the later portions of the game, this is where your builds can get a little bit more flexible. Uh, with Phantom Dancer giving you probably the highest DPS option and allowing you to kite more, um, Mortal Reminder will help you deal with a lot of healing in the game, which honestly, there's almost always healing, so you can't really go wrong with Mortal Reminder. Against extremely tanky comps that are building armor, I would recommend the Lord Dominic's Regard. And then if you're having trouble with crowd control, Merc Sim is a really good option. And then Bloodthirster, you probably don't need Bloodthirster because if you would have needed it, you, you you would know. But it's when you're getting dove and poked at the same time and you need just you just need lifesteal and survivability, you, you would go Bloodthirster. But my guess is that if you're going Bloodthirster, you probably would have gone on Mortal Shield Bow. So you don't have to go Bloodthirster too often because it's pretty expensive. And the last item I'd recommend is Guardian Angel. And you wouldn't normally get this item fourth, but if they have comps that are reset heavy and the only way they win is if they kill you, then getting a GA to kind of stop the momentum of the enemy team is always really good. So in terms of laning, Aphelios' biggest weakness is actually his level one because he has no abilities that he can use, which is going to lead to him getting into this uh, very familiar situation where you get shoved off the first wave and you're going to have to back off and pay, play respectfully. So this is a situation where uh, the exact thing happens where Xerath and Draven are actually able to get prio on me and I just completely back off the wave and you're going to notice that as the lane plays on, I'm going to back off completely and let them hit level two first. And I'm not really going to trade too aggressively. And instead, I'm just, I'm not touching the wave at all because I want to shove into me as fast as possible. And the only time I'm going to trade back in this lane is once the wave resets and we're both equal levels. And so I just wanted to show you guys that this is a situation that you are going to be in a lot as a Felios because you don't have a level one ability, which makes it harder for you to trade in lane. That being said, what if we end up getting a situation where we end up trading well in lane and we shove for the level two? How does the lane play out? So I have another clip where this time 
I'm against an Alistar, which means that one, I want to last hit the wave with Severum, but then I'm going to be looking to auto trade with Calibrum, and that's a very standard trading pattern for a level one Ophelios. You want to auto the way with Severum because it heals you and it overheals you, and then Calibrum has extra range, so you want to poke out with it, okay? So you're going to notice I hit level two here. I instantly do a Severum Q, and then I try to finish with a Calibrum Q. That's like the standard level two spike trading pattern, but um, they're going to overcommit for this trade because I end up taking a good trade, right? I, I forced my Severum Q and I took a really good trade on my level two power spike, which is extremely strong. It's almost always good for taking trades. And then I clean them up here. But the, the most important thing to note is that right here, um, when you hit level two as Aphelios and they're not respecting a level two, you instantly want to Severum Q on top of your opponents right here, Severum Q, and then you're gonna swap the Calibrum to finish off the auto attack because when you swap the Calibrum to finish off the auto attack, it means that you can follow up with the Calibrum Q right away. Unfortunately, I miss it, right? So I'm gonna miss my Calibrum Q follow-up that's casted right here, but that's the standard trade you wanna go for. You want a level two power spike into Severum Q into Calibrum Q to force your power spike on your opponents. And then after those early levels, you might be wondering, okay, well, what are our trading patterns then? So this is where you're gonna wanna start looking for swap combos, understanding what combos you can go for, like last hit combos to really set yourself up. So I'm a bit fed in this clip, but as you're gonna notice that this is one of these swap combos we talked about earlier, where it's gonna be elastic infernum into red white. So I'm sorry, elastic blue into red white, and you're gonna watch me run them down. And this is because I have a really good situation where I have a slow shoving wave and a good swap combo to take control. So watch, I'm gonna, blue the wave and then run down with red white and then i'm gonna take over the fight right and this is just classic aphelios you want to know when you can go for swap combos and chain your abilities together to take over the lane phase um levels like three to six one thing i want to mention before i talk about team fighting on aphelios is that it's actually really important to understand that so long as your gun order is correct, you're almost always gonna do damage. Maybe you're not gonna have like the highest DPS possible and obviously certain combos are better than others, but it's important to not overthink it because when you start overthinking it, you're gonna be more focused on getting the correct guns than figuring out how you should be playing team fights, which is much more important. So instead, what I would recommend is that you should let the current combinations you have dictate how you're gonna play the fight ahead of you, right? That being said, here are the best ways to each each gun. So, same concept as earlier, opposing fights with red white is always really good because it's gonna help you take down a single target and shred tanks. Especially if you have Kraken Slayer, it's a really nice way to open fights. Um, so long as the fights are close range, you can't really go wrong with red white. The weakness of red fight, red white, <laughs> the mid to late game team fights, however, is that it's actually relatively short ranged and it's really easy to get baited for going into like a melee range chakram fight. However, a weakness to chakram is that if you get CC'd, you're not going to be able to fight and you can't lifesteal and you're going to die. So when you're in the late game, it's important to understand that it is really good to use because it'll help you shred down a single target. But getting baited into going melee range too early can help you <laughs> fall apart in the late game. The next pair I'm going to talk about is green white. So as mentioned earlier, this pairing is extremely high in DPS and I find it really good in a lot of situations. It's good at following up on my teammates and it's good at setting up fights. So when I approach fights in the late game and they have divers or people I'm going to want to shred, what I like to do is I actually like to set towers up to where I think I'm going to have to kite the fight or where I think my flanks are. So if the fight's going to occur over here and then I think they're going to dive us, I can kite back and then even like if Nakali dives me, if all I need is basically like one sentry auto and the rest of my combos and I should be able to one shot people. So it's really, really effective in zoning people off from diving you, especially against divers when you feel like they're coming in from all angles. This combo is not bad at dealing with people. The only weakness of this combo, however, is for example, if you get caught with just green white and you're not able to set your towers up or get your chakrams going, your DPS is actually going to be lower than all your other gun combinations. So it's really important that when you're using this combo, you find places to set up your towers or your DPS is going to be falling off. And then my favorite late game combination, because I feel like it has a lot of consistency, 
is usually purple and blue. And the way I like to open it up is I enjoy using maybe like a long distance cow room combo, <laughs> we talked about earlier, to set up a grab. And then that'll open me up to get into grab and infernum. And the reason why this combo is so deadly in the late game, especially in those games where you feel like you're not too sure what's going on, basically it gives you a lot of room to work with. The best part about it is you have guaranteed self-peel and a snare. So you can guarantee yourself an instant auto attack because you have a lot higher attack speed and then you can AOE people with your Inferno because you have enough crit chance that at this point in the game, the higher your crit chance, the more likely it is that your Inferno is going to have um, increased damage and range, right? So what this ha what happens is is like if you get a stack team fight, you're pretty much gonna be one shotting people, and then better yet, if you want to catch people off guard with this combination, you could go for an infernum into auto Q, and that's like your main burst combo. So like if the team fight starts and you see their backline stacking, especially or you see people stacked, if you go for an infernum auto Q. It's a really, really good way to surprise people with burst at once and then one shot them out of the fight. So I'm going to show you guys two example team fights of uh, different types where uh, I show like how I set up for fights and the way they play out. So this fight, you're going to notice that I have green, white, and essentially I have a lot of towers set up towards where I think I'm going to be kiting and I'm fighting from afar despite all the chaos, right? And so then when I when she finally made it range me, I have enough chakrams. And this also leads me to then swap off into green purple because I don't need DPS anymore at that point in the fight, and having the consistency of grab is really good. So let's look at that one more time, right? So I have a lot of towers set up to not only fight from afar, but um, pretty much make it really hard for them to dive onto me. And they're gonna end up Kaisa ends up diving onto me, but I'm ready because at that point, I have enough chakrams that pretty much she dives onto me. I have enough damage that I can deal with her, right? And so now this this situation has me thinking, okay, their main da damage threat, Kaisa, I don't have to out DPS anyone now. So what I need is consistency. And so that leads me into my next swap combo of going into grav. So now I have grav applying on everyone and I'm able to take over the fight. And so understanding your gun orders and the combos you can pull off in fights is really good. And it all started off with me understanding that green white is really good at zone control in the late game team fight to take advantage of it. All right, so this next fight is a little bit less exciting, but it's a really good example of good usage of Inferno and Grav. When there's a really straightforward team fight, I want to do as much damage as possible on a lot of people. Inferno Grav is the way to go. So this fight is going to start with me landing a really good Inferno ult auto a few times, and then using Infernum Q into a grab swap when I want to make sure that they can't run away anymore when the enemy team realizes the fight is lost. So you notice I realize that we win the fight a little bit earlier so they can't get away. So let's take a look. So you notice they're diving into us. I'm like, wow, that's stacked members. Infernum ult right away. Auto attack. And then I go for the, the Infernum Q, which pretty much guarantees grab on everybody and we just absolutely win that fight. And that's a perfect example of when you see those like people stacking, lining up, Infernum grab team fight for sure. I actually wanted to add in one more team fight. Um, sorry for making the video so long, but this is like the exact example of getting a late game swap combo off with uh, Calibrum Q, Runon's grab into Infernum ulti. So just take a look at it uh, because this should be what you're thinking about when you're getting to late game team fights. I notice I'm low on ammo, so this is a good situation for me to go for a swap combo team fight. And so I land the Calibrum Q into the Grav, and then Infernum Flash Ulti Auto. Uh, pretty much like the perfect Ephelios combo. Um, and when you think of Ephelios, I want you to think of like really exciting things like this, where um, you see the setup right here. Like this is the exact moment that you know you win the team fight. You see the setup, and you can completely take over. Guys, Aphelios is definitely a really hard champion, but he's super rewarding to play, so I hope you all uh, give him a fair chance. If you've watched all the way to this point, thank you so much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe. Check me out on Twitch, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Peace.